So this morning I'm talking to you about, so this month we're teaching about abundance. Now, let me say something quickly. When it comes to teaching about finances and about, about abundance, one of the things you must realize that there are always two legs to these things. There is the natural leg and there's the spiritual leg. The problem with religion is this. Religion wants to, make you, wants to convince you that the only way to do it financially is strictly spiritual. And listen to me, everybody. I want to look up here. One of my biggest heartbreaks as a pastor is this. When people feel that God has disappointed them, and I listen to them, and I feel as if this is not God. This is your fault. But they are so hurt that they can't see it. And sometimes it's the way the pastors have positioned the teachings that almost makes people irresponsible. It's just the way the teachings are positioned. So today, as we teach about finances, I'm going to teach, I'm going to talk about very natural things. Then I'm going to talk about things, you know, I'm going to talk about things that, you know, that um, from natural things, I'm going to talk to things that are very spiritual along the line. Glory to God. Let's read our Bible in Matthew chapter 25 verse 1. The Bible says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto a ten virgins. So Jesus Christ was using this story to teach. He says, Which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. The Bible says five of this virgin were wise. And five of them were foolish. The Bible says, so why were they wise? Why were they foolish? So is it possible to be a Christian and be foolish? Yes. Is it possible to be a Christian and be wise? Yes. So why were they wise or foolish? The reason why is that if we know why they were foolish, we can apply it to ourselves. Because what happened was this. The bridegroom was going to come. The bridegroom could mean an opportunity was going to show up. The bridegroom could mean there was an appointment that was going to show up. So as they were waiting on this opportunity, the Bible says five were wise, five were foolish. So what was the thing with the foolish? The Bible says the foolish took their lambs. So the foolish were actually smart enough to take responsibility and have a lamb. It says they took their lamb, but they took what? They took no oil in what? In their lambs. And the Bible says the wise took their lambs, but with oil in them. So what happened is this. Everybody had their lamb, but the foolish had their lambs without oil in it. The wise had their lambs with, um, um, the wise had their lambs with oil in it and extra oil. So the difference between the foolish and the wise is this. Number one, the wise were planning for the future. That's the thing. The wise were planning for the future. The foolish were not planning for the future. The wise were planning for the future. And because they were planning for the future, they had savings. Listen to me. Three things are essential for you to do financially. There's a place of grace, and that is God's approval, God's blessing. But there is a place of the mentality that will help you do well in life. There's a place of the mentality that will help you do well in life. And the last thing that will help you do well in life is this, not just the mentality, there's a place of the skill. So what I've seen is this, a lot of people don't have the mentality to do well in life, but a lot of people have the drive, the mentality, but they don't have the skill. So these are the things you have to learn. For example, a lot of people say, I don't have money. You know what I've noticed? There's really nobody that does not have money and people that say they don't have money, what I really notice is this. They don't know how to manage their money. So when you people don't have money, it's having money is not the problem. It's the symptom of a what? A lack of financial skills. Glory to God. Let me show you something quickly here. Let me drop this table here. You know, I've come with all my tables. So this is what your income look like. Your income should be in seven pops. Two, three. Count to me, please. Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Seven. Seven. So, this person, who is this person now? Um, let, let me get someone to join me. Yeah, yeah come. Yeah, yeah. You have to always come for the prayers. You're, you know, thank you. Tell me your name again. What? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, pretty, beautiful, single. I hope you're single there. Yes, yeah, single, yeah. Just in case you want to date her, you can see me, you know. So, this is Oh, God, she makes... $1,000 every month. But these seven cups refers to the seven things she spends money on. Because if you don't plan your money, you're going to lose it. So this is the skill part of money. So the first cup is a couple of us must spend on. It's the cup of operational necessity. There's a cup like transportation, food, Uber, phone calls, data. And this cup 
we should spend something like, so she earns $1,000, we should spend something around 40% on that thing. So she'd be like, so give me 40%. Then, then let me just count this. 40% is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, $400 because she has 1000 in this cup. And the reason I'm showing this is that all of you need to begin to write down. But there's another cup here. What is this cup? This is the giving cup. As Christians, we believe that, number one, they will believe that we are stewards of our resources. What does that mean? The money does not belong to us, we are channels. And because we're channels, we should be able every month to tithe. So this is our giving cup. I put it at 15% because you will do your 10% tithe, but they're also given, given to your wife, given to your husband, given to your siblings. So this is a generosity cup where it has about 15%. Okay, what is the top cup here? The top cup is the emergency cup. What is the emergency cup? Have you know the emergency cup is that if I'm not able to earn money for a month, two or three months, what do I live on? It will surprise you that a lot of people don't have, if a lot of people are one pay to be in financial trouble. All they are is one month away from financial trouble. If they lose, it doesn't show a lot in our country because the way it shows a lot is through people that have debts. So in developed country, a lot of you watching online, you will notice those in developed country, because they have all this debt they service, if there's no income for one month, there's trouble. For five months, they repossess their car, they repossess their house. In our country, it doesn't show a lot because we even pay our house rent, what? In annually. But you need an emergency cup. Money you just put away. What do I suggest? You can start with 10%. And say 10% goes in my Joseph fund. So this is the fund. That's why you see people, they hit their car, they can't fix their account to the next big check. Because there's no emergency fund anywhere. So there's an emergency fund. After the emergency fund, what's the next thing? There's an investment fund. This is what you pay yourself and say, I take another 10% of my $1,000 and I put it here. So every month I take 10% away, 10% away, 10% away. Now the next thing also is this. Then there's what? What are the cup now? Look on the screen. What are the cup now? Oh, I thought they put the cup on the screen. That's a project cup. So the project cup will cover for things like house rents. It will cover for things that, you know, I want to buy a house rent. I want to do house rent. I want to buy a car. So I'm putting some money in the project cup right there. I'm putting the 10%. And then reads what? Another 10% in what? What? Development. Someone says, what's development cup? For you to make more money, you must learn new things. For you to make money, you must develop yourself. So you need to put money aside that helps you develop yourself. So 10% goes into that cup. Then there's a the last 5% that goes into your leisure cup. What's your leisure cup? That's the money you used to do dinners. That's the money you used to go to Barbados and Mauritius and Dubai. That's the money you just used to play around. The challenge is this. This is how this cup is. The question is that, which cup are you struggling with? Which cup are you struggling with? Because which cup are you struggling with? Which cup is overburdened? Many of you say, which cup don't, okay, let's start. Which cup don't you have? <laughs> if you don't have cups, if you don't have one, one or two cups here, raise up your hands, let me see. Okay, write down the cups you don't have and begin to make a plan to start the cup this month. Who has all the, all the cups? Come on, people that have all the cups, yes, thank you. People have, some people have all the cups. So, some people don't have cups at all. Some people have, who has a cup, but you're struggling with a cup? What cup is that? Huh? Someone says, I'm struggling with development costs. I'm, I'm stopping with development costs. Okay, who else has a cup that he's struggling with? And, and, and let me just go, thank you, thank you, Shinene. I'm, I'm sorry, not, 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 not Shinene. That, that's not a name, I just said that to her. So, but this is what I'm saying to you. The reason I'm saying this to you is this. Because... If you don't, if you don't really walk this house, it's going to become a financial trouble. And this is why some of you, this is why some Christians, they want to tithe, but they cannot tithe. You know why? They are, they are so burdened on some other areas. And if you don't have this kind of style, you're going to believe from paycheck to paycheck. And what you need to do after this service is this, because this is a very practical teaching, is to say, hey, and if you're married, call your partner and say, how do we fix this cup? How do we fix this cup? Your investment cup is so important. And let me tell you something. You start with 10%. That investment cup needs to go higher because of your future. 
He needs to go higher. So the more you end, the more you should be able to put aside. The difference between the wise virgin and the foolish virgin is this. The foolish virgin had no plan for the future. They had no saving. There was nothing left in the. There was a cup that had nothing in it. They were okay for today, but they were not okay for tomorrow. Many of you are okay for today, but are you okay for tomorrow? And sometimes what you call demonic problem is just poor planning. That's a good time to clap. Sometimes what you call demonic problem is just what? Poor planning. Sometimes what you call delay is just life process. Because it's not delay. It's just that some things just take some time. Someone says, I'm looking for business funding. I've looked for one month and I'm tired. Sometimes just the process, just the process, it's like delay. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, some of you that know this, some of you, some of you are very intelligent financially and all of those things, and you're wondering, why is the pastor teaching us this today? I really respect the father intelligent, but I'm sure there are people in your life that this will be a good way to explain to them their financial situation. I'm sure there are people in your life that can be like, oh, I can use this and explain to my neighbor. I can use it to explain to my friends. I can use it to explain to them. Because like I said to you, when it comes to financial abundance, there are three things. Number one, there is the mentality. Number two, there is the skill. For example, when I say there's the skill, there are just areas you can easily make money. There are industries and skills you have that are high paying. It's not even about prayer. It's just high paying. Sometimes I, I really think that we Christians, we make a lot of things complicated. They're high paying skills. For example, someone says, I want to make more money. There are simple things you can learn. Content writing, it's in a lot of demand. Robotics, it's in a lot of demand. Um, there are skills. Content writing, robotics, trading, crypto. It's not people, are, people are making money out of crypto. And these are the skill side. These are the skill side of things. Because I, I want to be, see, a lot of Christians are disappointed because they keep saying that God is not faithful. But what it is is that what God expects from them, they're not even able to do it. So, you are here, you're jobless. Listen to me. You are in a generation where you cannot even be jobless because jobs are everywhere. You can just go online, start learning how to trade crypto, trade with dummy money, and you start from there. This is a generation where people are at home learning how to design websites, and people are buying website templates for them. So, if you want to get, someone says, well, my problem is that there's, I don't have money at all. If, if you don't have money at all, one of the things is this. And I mean, there are four stages of financial planning. Maybe I can cover that next week. But if you want to sort out yourself financially, you're struggling financially, just begin to learn high income skills. Oh, and they're high income skills. That brings you money very fast. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That seems weak to live. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So they're high income skills. That once you have the skills, for example, um, one, of, one of our church members run an oil company. And, you know, because of the oil pipes I drew down below, where human beings can't go, they take, it's robots that they take to fix it when they have a the problem. So he told me that they flew down to the country, about five young boys in the U.S., about 18, 19 there or thereabouts. He said, these are people that they do gaming. He says, and those people will send robots down and they know how to operate it. I said, my God, these are high. And they said, oh, it will pay them loads of money to fly them in. High income skill. What is an high income skill? It's amazing because in this culture, in our culture, our strategy out of financial um, bondage is begging. Praise the Lord. So we come up with a list of people to support your wedding. It's a dumb thing to do. If you cannot fund your wedding, why do you want to get married? How come you're coming up with a list of people and you actually get disappointed? They don't help you. What are they going to help you do? Help you marry your wife? Then you have, so, you know, why men are doing that? Then the women are hoping that uh, my financial strategy, not the women here anyway, are hoping that if I date a rich guy, I'll be okay financially. Listen to me. You are too okay by yourself. And all you have to do is to master this. This is all you have to master. This seven cup, master the seven cups. So let's keep going ahead. So they're high income skills. Not only high income skills, they're very profitable industries you can work. They're, they're literally about, they're literally 10 industries. That if you walk in here, just for you to know, 
the industry that produces the largest amount of millionaires in the world is what? Real estate. The industry that produces the, large, the largest amount of millionaires in the world, I think about 65% of the world millionaires are in real estate. I didn't have to pray. Information is available. Someone says, you don't know my background. I want us to listen to a story. Well, there's a guy, can I have a microphone? Where's Sam? Sam, will you come? Well, let's, let's, let's welcome Sam. Sam, come. Give, give him a microphone. Please give him the microphone as he's coming. Sam, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. And, and Sam, is a young, Sam is a young guy. You know, Sam is a young guy. Thank you for coming. Hi, good morning, church. Good morning. He, you will always see him sit back with his wife and uh, with his guys. Sam, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Just some few years ago, you were in, um, is it Kitty Ondo State? Ondo <laughs> State. Ondo State. Yeah. And you, really, you were really poor. Yeah, I was. was, was. You, you came from, <laughs> you, not knowing where you, your family was poor. It was so, you were so poor that there was a time that three days, there was no food and you drank water for three days. Not that you were fasting. Several times, yes. Several times. Yes. I mean, I can't remember how many times I had to go without food. Go without food for several days. Yeah. This is amazing. Even to go to school was a problem. School fees. How many times are you driven from home? Because <laughs> let's not go there. Actually, it was <laughs> because driven from home because there was no school fees. And the reason I'm saying so is because some of you feel as if all this thing the pastor is saying is theory. If he knows my case, mm. but but Sam, how you currently run 14 companies? Yeah, I do. Am I right? Yes, yes. yes. And you have over 500 staff. Yeah, I do. And you are not up to 35. <laughs> And you're not up to 35. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Because they hear the word the same way you hear the word. Mm. So, from where he was, so just let's go back five years ago. Five years ago, what were you? Did you even have a car five years ago? <laughs> it was that terrible. I mean, it was car. I mean, that's. Your fa- my father never had a car, so why, why do I think I should have one? You know, it was that bad. You know? it, it, you, you see, so, so some years ago, so now he's 35, he's not up to 35, he's married, he has a company that has 500, he, his wife manages one of the, I, I don't know, is your wife in this service or she's coming? Yeah, she is, she's somewhere, where is she? she Sarah, somewhere. where are you? <laughs> Sarah, stand, let me see you. And, and, and that is his wife, and the wife runs one of the companies, which is the, um, the, the, the super, retail arm, yeah. the retail arm, and yeah. she told me that they're about 200 millionaire, 200 millionaire annually, or what? what, what? It's over a billion, actually. You know, so, so that, you know, so, so that's what the wife runs. And you can see the wife also, you just see them, you know, just so skinny and all of that. But that's what I'm going to. No, no, because, you know, sometimes you still see the poverty. Like, you know, I'm just trying to make him come out. But, you know, you know. But this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying to you. What changed? What changed? You were this person. You didn't have shoes to go to school. You didn't have food. You were so poor. You were broke. What changed? Who gave you money? Who helped you? Did you go? Did, you, did some pollution fund you? Who, who, who helped Nobody you? Nobody did. I mean, I had friends who were even rich that I reached out to and they turned me down. And I'm it, glad they did, actually. Let me tell you something. The most difficult person to get help is a poor person. Mm. Even the banks know that. Yes, the banks keep begging MTN and the bank institution, take money, take money, take money. You that need the money, they will not give it to you. Why? People only give money to people that have proven record of success. Mm. Sure. You can take that to the bank. That's why I said, so when you have oil, you get more oil. Yes. Mm. You remember the story of the five virgins and the five foolish ones? Once you have oil, you get more oil. When the ones that didn't have oil asked the virgin, what did they say? They said, my brother, we don't give oil. Go and buy the way this result is, we don't give results, so you must go and get your own. Mm. So what changed, sir? Okay, so I, I, I said to myself that I'm tired of this lifestyle. Okay. I, I got to a turning will, point. Will you hold the microphone closer to your mouth? You yeah. know, I, it was like a turning point for me. I said, this must change. Ah, I mean, I carried so much potential, and I'm, and I'm broke, hungry. So I made up my mind that I must deliberately begin to take actions that will make me change. And so I go all out, so I do everything. I'm sleepless, I'm reckless, I'm crazy, I'm everywhere. 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 So, so, so watch this. The basic thing was this. A big decision. Mm. And this is the problem with the middle class. The middle class, your comfort destroys your appetite. And the, the, that's the problem. The middle class, because, but it was first a decision backed up with the mentality 
backed up with action. And that's what I'm trying to give to you in this service. It's a decision backed up with mentality, backed up with action. Just tell us one of the projects you're doing currently. Okay, so um, glory to God. Um, God has been faithful. God has been faithful. Um, we currently have projects in Nigeria and in UAE. So I think that just summarizes it. Let me know. You have projects in Nigeria and in, in UAE. the UAE. Yeah. And, it, and I'm just saying, and there's no politician that is funding you. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> and someone says, let him tell us how he did it. But that's what I've been teaching you all along. What's your final word to everyone here? Go all out. Go all out. Just all out. I mean, you have much more than you're currently doing. Go all out. Get restless with yourself. I mean, so restless that everybody can literally see that you are restless. It was that. My, my fiancé knew that. I can't. 2 a.m. I'm up, 4 a.m. I'm away. I mean, she's like, guy, calm down. I'm like, this must happen for me. You know? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Listen to me. You can't be the same church and the same thing. Your life is not changing. You know? Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so the first thing is, see, let me tell you something. The, I don't know if you heard the story. The first thing that you must take responsibility, a difference between wealth, between success mentality and failure mentality, or poverty and abundance, the first, one of the first major things is this, poor people blame others for their war. It's either the government, it's the people, it's the parents, it's the degree, they blame other people. Rich mentality says, I am what I am because I am there. I take responsibility and going forward. There's something about taking responsibility that gives you power. It gives you power. Just imagine from that low life, now over 500 employees. So I said, what changed? The first thing that changes, and this is why if you attend this church, you should be proud of your church. You attend a church that teaches you the word and your mindset is opened. Because unfortunately, he said something. Why don't we go out? All out? And I'm going to explain to you this, this thing. Why do People that are not Christians succeed more than Christians. I'll tell you the reason why. Because somehow, religion tells Christians to go all out. I'm telling the truth. I, there's this thing that runs on social media called soap for me. And people say, this, this one the mindset, it's easy to make money illegitimately. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Nonsense. Nonsense. People that make money illegitimately, can you do what they do? Is it easy to be a kidnapper? If it's easy, carry gone. It's, you have the one that thinks it's easy. Do you know what these people do where they stay? And unfortunately, because you have that mindset that it's so difficult to make money legitimately, you don't even go for it. You don't even go for it because it's somewhere your subconscious is difficult. Those people that say cut soap, they go to take their bath in graveyards and they take their bath. It's God that knows how many nights they have to take their baths. How often they have to go there. But you, if they say market a product after the second time, you're tired. But they take their bath in the forest every Friday. They are dead toward midnight. Come rain, come sunshine. No matter the peace, they take their bath there. You see all these girls that, you know, guys sponsor their life. They still meet some, you know, I, I, I asked one of the girls, I said, how do you follow people home that you don't know their house? You get a phone call. You say, Pastor, it's fatal. I said, faith, said, faith that you will come back. He said, don't others come back. He said, ah, Pastor, a lot of people die. He said, boy, just believe it will not happen to me. And they go, sometimes those men are smelling, are stinking, have impossible demands. The thing is this, we Christians, we talk a lot. We don't have that drive. And we keep saying, why are they more blessed than we are? God is a kind and good God. Everyone that does, God will respond. Somehow, our religiosity holds us back. Those guys, they will tell them, bring your mother's left eye. They don't mind. You know, the kind of, that drive is so high and sometimes very negative. But the challenge is that there are Christians that can have drive. Listen, we're fasting and praying for financial open doors. A lot of the Christians will not even get up to pray tomorrow morning. 
And by Thursday, you say, God is not faithful. Ha, listen to me. The way it works is that God responds to your seed sown. And when I say your seed sown, I'm not just talking about money. The effort you put in. Tomorrow, we're going to pray this morning. 6.30 for finances. Watch. All the men will be rolling on the bed and say, I'm going to work. But those guys, if their babalawo says, be somewhere at 6 30 a.m., they can't, they, see, they have not born their grandfather, grandfather, grandmother, that they should not be there. And we keep saying, and this is what we keep saying. We say, why are they more blessed? And we are not more blessed. Number one, the drive is not there. Then number two, the mentality is not there. Then number two, the discipline is not there. The Bible says there were 10 virgins. Some were wise and some were foolish. Which one are you? Can I have my bath? The baby bath. So the first thing we're learning today is this. This is what the first lesson we're learning. Hey, if you're going to be blessed, there's a gray side. There's a mentality side. There's a skill side. For example, even if you're driven, you must have skill to help you manage your finance. But the mentality side, this is the mentality side. Some of you saw this online, but I wanted to bring it again. And look at this. This is just a, the, in case you watch for the first time. And if this is getting you blessed, you need to tell your friends online to join in. All of you online, let me know if you're getting blessed. And this, look, watch this now. This is a, just a, a baby bathtub. It will put, will take the, the baby takes the bath here because the bathtub at home is too big. And this is what is the simple thing it is. This is a simple thing. So we put the baby. Can, I have, can, can you just put in some water for me? So this is what you do most, most of the time. You heat up the water and put the bathtub there. That's good. And you put the baby in here and bat for the baby. But let me just ask a question. Brother, can you come, sir? I want to bath you in this. Come, 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 come. Brother, come. I want to bath you in this. Can I bath him in this? He's outgrown it, right? Many of you are fishing in waters you have outgrown. And you still want the results that you want. Listen to me. If my mentality is a baby top water, there are fish I can catch in this water. There are things I can have in this water. If you're going to catch fish, you don't catch fish in the gutters. Those are tiny, those are tiny little, little fish. If you want the real fish, you have to go to the stream. Uh, when they talk about deals, you are always going for 200,000, 300,000, 400,000. Sir, on that list, there's also 50 million. There's also 60 million. There's also 70 million. Someone says, I want to have a job that pays me this amount of money. Question. It's very easy. Get the skill of the job and you get the job. But why don't you get the job? Because our mentality. Listen, most of us have what? We have a baby bad top mentality. But we are hoping to be what? To be having stream and ocean results. If you have a baby bad top mentality, all you will get is some baby oil. You will not get some real result. If you want result, go to the ocean. Go to the stream. That's where people that want result go to. <laughs> Glory to God. It's time, people. It's time. You see, we can't keep thinking baby top mentality and be expecting ocean kind of result. We can't keep thinking baby top mentality and be experiencing river kind of deals. No, sir. If we want to fish, we want to fish. It's either we go all in or we go home. It's either we go all in or we go home. Someone said it's so challenging. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. For you to live here. For you to live here knowing I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm destined for greatness. I'm destined for topship. I'm destined for leadership. I refuse to settle. If I'm in IT, I'm not one of them. I'm the leader. If I'm in real estate, I'm the leader. That's it. You must refuse to settle. My God, you must refuse to settle. You must be like Caleb. Caleb said, give me this mountain. He said, it's tough. Give it to me and I will possess it. Glory to God. Yes. Lift up your hands and say, I receive boldness. So, we're getting deep now. 
Three things, because I've never gone to the teaching. I've just given the ele elements. The first thing you need is the mentality. Then the skill. Then we go to the grace. The problem that Christians only want grace. <laughs> Listen to me. When you have grace, but you're thinking like baby top, you see how baby top what results. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Tell yourself it's time to fish in the deep sea. Do you know what God told Mo, um, um, Peter when he came to him? Peter said, we caught nothing. Jesus Christ says, he said, launch into the deep. Eh? Luke chapter 5. Find He said, launch into the deep. He said, don't fish where there are shallow waters. He said, go to where it's deep. Lose it there. I love, what, I love what Sam said. Sam said, you just make up your mind that I will lose it. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. And this is true, this is true about failure. We either fail or learn. It's just learning. We're just learning. We only fail when we stop trying. I'm telling you, do you, do you know how many of you are in church here? And you know I love church because church is a leveler. Church is a place where you can learn. You can become a cell leader. You can, you can begin to do things that will begin to build your leadership capacity, management capacity. All the, but you keep running away. You've run for too long. The Bible says you are the light of the world. You know what light is? Nobody takes a torchlight and flash behind him. You take a torchlight and you put ahead of you. You should get up and take some responsibility. I'm tired of people that talk about their country and can fix their country. I'm tired of people that complain and can do something. He didn't say we're well, the light of the church. He said we're well, the light of the world. He didn't say we're well, the salt of the church. He said we're well, the salt of the earth. Ah! Enter the industry and do something, sir. Someone say, Pastor, it's so difficult. That's why you're going there. You'll go there in the spirit of Zerubbabel. What well, that mountain before Zerubbabel that shall be flattened to a place. Nobody believed that anybody can raise this amount of money. Who believed that you could buy a company and job for $100 million? Some people did it. Some people did it. That's why I want to encourage you. This month, please, don't even dare think about missing church. Let your faith be stretched. Three things are important about finances. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling the three things because my teaching follows the three pattern. There's a place of grace. There's a place of mentality. And there's a place of skill. What does grace do? Grace guarantees that it happens. Because God is in it. What does skill do? Skill makes sure that your effort are not wasted. What does mentality do? You have the right emotional state to dream and to go far. Because... When you don't have the right mentality, this is what happens. Let me show you what happens. Where's my friend, Shinene come? That's your name for today. This is what happens. Once you don't have the right... Because what happens is this. All of us grow, grow up with very difficult mindset. Mindset that holds us back. We, we have mindset that holds us back. It holds us back financially. So one of the mindsets is that women can't do much. You know I'm a woman. He said, well, you're not a woman. What do you expect me to be a billionaire? In Nigeria, nothing works. Money is so difficult to come by. So when you have this mindset, look at this. This is this lady's financial part. I thought the camera person would be here, but, you know, this is this lady's financial part. No, over here. So all those blocks, each of those blocks are mental boundaries that hold her back. And you need to know, the same way you fix, you know the cup that's holding you down. What mindset is holding you back? You know, let me tell you something. One of the mindsets that holds us back is this. When I fail, it's irredeemable. We don't see failure as a learning phase. So we're not willing to try. It shows in that movie. In that movie, when something bad happens, everybody takes off. In the movie of white people, when something bad is happening, they're saying, who is there? Who is there? Who is there? And our joke laugh at them. And we don't know that's why they're going forward. So what happens is this. Thank you so much for being kind to me today. So this is mindset. So maybe this mindset is just one of the mindsets that holds her back. So she goes, climb, don't walk over it. You have to climb over it. No, not, not climb, walk over it. Yeah. 
But that mindset is good. She's walked over it. Maybe because she went to school, maybe because of her friends, because of development, she can go over that. Then she gets to what? A higher mindset. So can you go over it? Yeah. Now, it's more difficult, but she still went over it. Then she comes here. No, you need to remove this table. Pause. Pause. Remove this table. M move the table to the, to the edge. Thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Just where it is. You just, just put it. That's fine. Yeah. So, what happens is that she comes to this mindset, and now she needs to cross this. And guess what? She can't go anywhere because she can't cross this. And until something, until she can cross this, until she can cross this, she'll be stuck. And that's why some people are stuck at 10 million per annum. Some people are stuck at 2 million per annum. Some people are stuck at 5 million per annum. Some people are stuck at 100 million per annum. Some people are stuck at 1 billion per annum. Some people are stuck at 3 billion per annum. What are you stuck at? You're stuck where your mind is stuck. All right? The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The, see, the financial barriers are not on the outside. They are mostly on the inside. Because once you break the financial barrier on the inside, you will break it on the outside. And that's why, watch this, that's why when lottery people win money, within two years, what happened? They lose all the money. Because you don't change someone's financial state by giving them money. They will lose the money until it is equal to their financial state on the inside. On their, their financial, their mental financial state. The question I want to ask you, this service is more of you asking me your questions. It's to ask you, what is the mentality that is holding you back? Oh, because I'm a single girl, I can't do so much. Because I'm so young, I can't do so much. Oh, who's going to help me? I have no family. If I knew a politician, until I relocate to Canada, I can't become rich. These are all the mindsets there. Who's going to pay so much for this? And you need to see that and say, what mindset is holding me back? The Bible says there were five virgin. Five were foolish. Five were wise. Let's begin to close this today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Are you getting blessed today? Yes, sir. If you're getting blessed online, I'm getting blessed. So, so everybody bring out your barrier and paper. This is a church that wants to help you. This church, I want to help you. I don't want to just come. If your husband is not doing it, knock him up and say, honey, all of you are home, all of you watching online, get out your barrier and paper. I have some questions for you. The first question is this, cops. And if you miss the cops in the live service, online, go back and watch it. Ask yourself, what cops do I need to fix? What cup do I need to put there that is not there? What cup do I need to fix? Then the second thing is this. Which mindset is holding me back from going forward? The reason why is that the first step towards your financial freedom is to know what it is. Then we can find a solution. You know, we had a meeting one time. Someone says, I want, to be, I want to be as rich as this person. I said, that's a good idea. I said, can you take the risk it takes? He said, no. I said, what you want to be is not as important as can you be what he is. And I want to say to you all of you that attend the physical church, use the opportunity to serve in church as a place to grow. Belong to a group so that, first of all, church is good because if you belong to a cell, in that cell there can be a millionaire, a billionaire. You have the opportunity to interact with people and such things changes your mind. Because if your life is going to change, how does God change us? See, oh my God. If your life is going to change, it's going to change your mind first. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. He says, be what? Be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. Most of us are praying for things our mind is not transformed to have. I remember one of my preaching mentors said to, was preaching and said this. He said, I was believing for prosperity. Then he was in America. I said, we went to eat. And as we went to eat, he said, I was going to tip. And when I was going to tip, I didn't have $5 to give them for tip. Five or twenty dollars to give them for tip. He said, but I was dining with a guy that was a billionaire businessman. That was his host. And the guy was, he was like, oh, sorry, do you have like $25, $20 to tip? I guess I don't worry, I'll take care of it. And he looked back, and the billionaire left them $500. And they were like, wow. He said, he said I never knew my thinking was so small that I've thought that TP must be $5 and $10. I never even imagined. He said, I was here preaching prosperity, believing for prosperity, but my thinking was a baby part of thinking. Is that not how you give your offerings? You can't even believe that some people give offering of 100,000 naira. We have one staff that worked with Bishop David Deco, 
And the guy told me, he said, oh, Bishop David, Bishop David was offering in every service is 10 million. I said, huh? <laughs> I said, they have four services. It is to come four times. I'm telling you, there are people in this church that are offering every service is 10,000 naira. So I say, huh? See, you don't understand. You don't understand. The reason why it's, imp- it's just the way you're thinking from. And you need to expand the thinking. You need to expand the thinking. So the question is that what cup do you need to create? What cup do you need to feel? What is the mentality that's holding you? What is the mentality? The mentality could be something from childhood. Let me tell you something. Uh, can, can I give this to you? Will you receive it? Yes, All of you that are middle class, wave your hands. Wave your hands. Just for you to know. They don't look at middle class. It's just exaggerated to poor. They just know. Just know. Just for you to know. Middle class just one step away from poor. Just know. Just let's be honest about it. Praise the Lord. Because our parents were middle class until they became 50 and 60. And what happened? It just delayed poor. So why does a middle class not scale? The reason why is this. For most of them, it's a comfort. For the other thing is this. Have a look at me. There's a way you want to have a lot of money that you start feeling guilty. Who knows what I'm talking about? That's it. And until your soul can accept that something is good, he will not release you to do it. So most people, middle class actually, it's the guilt that what do I need this money for? But how, see, how the rich people beat it. People like Elon Musk, this is how they beat it. They give themselves a project that is based on humanity and say that's why they need the money. Salomon Mark said things like, oh, I want to build a place in Mars. So even though he has $200 billion, it's not enough because his, his goal is to make Mars what? Habitable. He needs billions and billions. So he doesn't feel bad about it. Listen to me. This is why God tells you to give. Why does God tell you to give? God says, have a vision for generosity that is bigger than yourself so that, you, so that the negative thought that holds you back is broken and you can begin to dream. This is why we fight. This is why we give. Because, because all of a sudden, you don't feel bad again. Because the reason why you want the wealth or the money is not for yourself. That's a bigger cause. So you're like, you know, I want to help my church build that orphanage for 1,000 people. That's why I need the 2.5 billion. So all of a sudden, your mind understands it. The problem is this. Once your mind does not understand it, you know, come, 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 come. Once your mind does not understand it, this is what it is. You want something. And that's why it's not enough to set a financial goal. You must have the why. Once you, I want to put your hands around me. Once your mind does not understand it, as you begin to move towards it, your mind pulls you back. You know, because the mind is trained to hold you back from things you feel bad about things you fear, things that makes you feel guilty. So if your mind feels guilty that too much money can make you go bad, it begins to hold you back. See, what are you looking for again? You have two cars. You have one house. Don't go far. Don't go. And you wonder why you don't have the energy to pursue your dream because there's no bigger reason. And that's why the Bible says this. <laughs> Bible is very wise. I'm telling you, when I read the Bible, like the God is so wise. He said, it's more blessed to give. You, you wonder, hey, how can I be the one giving you 100K and you say I'm more blessed? He said, because the one that received is a terminal gift. Because the one that gets the cash of the car is a terminal gift. The one that gives, there is an expansion that goes on on the inside. That's why Proverbs says, the liberal soul is made fat. He says, the liberal soul is what is expanded. And let me say to you, all of you that don't try to give, let me just tell you this quickly. There's nothing that God asks you to give that is not for your sake. Why? Every time God asks you to give, it's like a balloon. God is trying to expand your capacity. Why? Whatever you can walk away from determines what can come to you. I'll say it again. Whatever you can walk away from determines what can come to you. So God is saying, I want to expand your capacity. God says, I want to just... See, you don't understand. There's, there's a fulfillment. There's a fulfillment I, I experience when I give. But not just a fulfillment, there's also grace. You know, I told you about three things about money. There's mindset, there's skill, and there's grace. The Bible says God gives grace to the humble. Bible says in 2 Corinthians, oh, let's, let's look at that. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, let's look at that. Oh, glory to God. 
Hey, 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 hey. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Yes, Second Corinthians 9. Mm. See what the Bible says about the giver. Second Corinthians 9, verse 6. He says, But this I say, he which gives sparingly in a tiny way, reaps up so sparingly. He which sows bountifully, reaps bountifully. Verse 7. Every man has a purpose in his heart. And this is why we don't pressure for the giving our church. You know why? If you give grudgingly, it's a waste of time. See, you are releasing the money, but your heart is in bondage. God says, that's why I collect. I take the heart first, and the money comes second. That's why a lot of people tight and give offering and never see results. You know why? They are tightening out of fear. They've been thought that God is agbero, that if you don't tight, it will spoil your business, not my father. We don't, we, see, you don't need to threaten to pay tight. You never. Pay tight because you know God is good to you. And you are responsible. See what the Bible says here. It says, every man has a purpose in his heart, let him give. Not grudgingly, or what of necessity for God loves a cheerful. It says, the way it works is that your giving works when you're cheerful. Verse, the, the next verse. And God is what? Able to make what? All grace. Oh, nakura ni ma He did say God will make some. God says, I will take all grace. I put all grace. God says, all grace come together and he wires it in a direction. Hey, how can someone that all grace is working for lack in life? See what the Bible says. The Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always, having all, all, having all sufficiency in all things. He says, even the things that money cannot buy, grace will bring to you. Hallelujah. Can I profess out by you this morning? You will walk in relationship that will prepare you to the next level. Ah, men will help you without asking. I said men will ask you without asking. They will help you without asking. God will raise up dream supporters. Some of you need funding for your business. Some of you need recommendation, a letter, and approval. I said God will raise up help for you. Grace will raise up help for you. Shout amen. Everybody put your right hand on your chest. I'm most so pallid about Shataya. I'm praying for you. You will walk into a relationship that will open your financial mind. You will walk into a relationship that will open your financial destiny. You have done better, but from today you will do better. In the name of Jesus. God uses men to raise men. The men that are destined to raise you, they come to you in this season. Receive financial wisdom. Receive financial grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Let's pray.